sexual reproduction. So fundamentally, how do offspring acquire genes from their parents? We started talking about this a little bit in unit one, but we are going to go more in depth now that we are in unit four. So by the end of this lesson, there are a couple of things you should be able to do. The first thing is define asexual and sexual reproduction. You should also be able to explain the differences between them and why those differences are important. You should be able to describe and explain some of the main methods of asexual reproduction. There are many other methods that we won't necessarily be discussing, but there are a couple of main ones in here that you should understand. And be able to explain the origin of gametes and their purpose in sexual reproduction. Starting with sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction is when two parents give rise to offspring that have a unique combination of genes inherited from the two parents. So as we talked about in unit one, this is when two organisms come together and contribute to the genes of one new organism. It is not a copy of either of them, it is a mixture of the two. Each parent contributes a gamete, so sperm and an egg, which creates a zygote, and that zygote eventually becomes an embryo. This is important because it allows for genetic variation, as we talked about again in unit one, but it is much more time and energy consuming than asexual reproduction. And then moving on to asexual reproduction, this is when one organism creates a genetic copy of itself and passes on copies of its genes without creating a gamete. The resulting offspring is usually genetically identical to the parent. There is a possibility for mutation, but it is not the same kind of variation as in sexual reproduction. It is faster, but again, it is an exact copy pending for mutations. Moving into a couple of types of asexual reproduction. The first one is binary fission. We usually see binary fission in bacteria. This occurs when a parent cell doubles its DNA, so it replicates its DNA, and then divides into two separate cells. This is probably one of the more common ones. We have that prokaryotic chromosome, Eventually that duplicates. The cell continues to grow until there is enough material and energy within it to divide into two separate cells. Then we have budding. This is when a small growth on the surface of a parent organism breaks off and results in the formation of a new individual. So as you can see on the right, we have an example of hydras. Uh, this also occurs in yeasts and a couple other species, but in a hydra, we have a tiny bump appearing on the right side of the parent hydra that eventually develops into a bud. The bud continues to grow until it reaches a size at which it can sustain itself, and then the bud breaks off and becomes an independent hydra. Two other types of asexual reproduction are fragmentation. This is when an organism breaks into two or more parts, each creating a copy of the parent. Uh, this is different than budding, because in, in budding, that is where growth specifically occurs with the intention to reproduce. Fragmentation is something when it doesn't occur intentionally. So you see it in organisms like starfish. So starfish, if you cruelly break them in half, both of those halves can reproduce their cells to create a copy of themselves. So you take one starfish, break it in two, you end up with two starfish. They're exactly genetically identical but they're two separate organisms. Then parthenogenesis. This is when an embryo occurs from an unfertilized cell. So this usually occurs in invertebrates as well as some fish, amphibians, and reptiles. And it's when sexual reproduction would be the goal, but sexual reproduction has failed, either due to lack of a partner or other situation, that embryo then simply grows into an exact copy of the parent. Again, like I said, these are just a couple of other kinds of asexual reproduction. There are others. Feel free to research and find other examples if you think that will help you understand better. So how might an organism create an identical copy of itself? What benefits would you say the organism would have to reproduce like this? Try and think about advantages we haven't already talked about. Why would asexual reproduction be beneficial to some species? 
We've talked about in ecology, why sometimes you need more members of a population or why it might be worth spending more time reproducing. Think about ways in which it connects back to topics like that. Moving on from asexual reproduction to sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction uses gametes. Gametes are things like eggs and sperm. So in sexual reproduction, the vehicles that transmit genetic information are called gametes. Two gametes come together to create an offspring in the form of a zygote. Um, again, male gametes are the sperm and female gametes are the egg or the ova. They come together and they create a zygote, which eventually becomes an embryo. So write down your answers on your note taker and then we can possibly discuss them as a class together. Um, some organisms can reproduce using both asexual and sexual reproduction. Why might this be advantageous? We talked about parthenogenesis. We've talked about sexual reproduction. Think about ways in which it might benefit a species to have the ability to do both or cases where it might not be advantageous. So as you listen to this lesson, make sure that you can answer these questions. Um, if not, go back, listen to the lesson again, reading other resources. Uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of each type of reproduction, asexual and sexual? What are the two types of asexual reproduction we just discussed mainly, and how could they be beneficial to a species? And what are gametes, and what function do they serve in sexual reproduction? If you have any other questions, make sure to reach out to your teacher, or go back, listen again, or go through the readings. Thanks.